Hi, welcome to The Virgo Show. I'm Sherry Hansen. I am among some very distinguished gentlemen here, and I thank them for taking the time to join me today. We're at Hansen's Plumbing and Heating, and I'm with um, Raymond Brune, Rodney Hansen, Don Crozier, and Alwyn Martinson. And all these guys, and Rodney did say that I could go ahead and say this, are in their 80s. And so um, I'm catching up, but maybe not quite as quick. But um, I think what I hear all the time this year is, oh my goodness, this has to be the worst winter we've ever had. And you know, it hasn't been pleasant. It's been cold. We've had quite a bit of snow and um, we've had to be a little innovative on how to figure out how to handle our winter. But these guys all have a story to tell or, or have had a little bit more winters under their belt than maybe um, some of you have had. And um, I thought it would be fun to just talk to them about how they managed and some of the winters that they've seen. And may maybe we won't feel so bad about this terrible winter that we think we're having. So Ray, I think I'm going to start with you. If you want to tell us a little bit on your story, that'd be great. Thank you. Well, I'm going to tell the story about uh, the winter of 1950 and going into 1951. The first part of that winter was normal, and March came in roaring like a lion. Well, we were li my wife and I, we were living out in the country, and uh, our doctor was in Purim, and the hospital was in Purim, and uh, her due date for our first baby was set for March 15th. Well, March came in with a lot of snow and a lot of storms and whatnot and all, and we made, uh, we were uh, rather frightened to have the first baby, so whenever a storm came along, we'd uh, pack up and go into Vergas and stay with our folks, and we did that two times. And um, along about the, towards the middle of March, uh, we were at home, and and uh, I remember the electrician and his helper stopped because they knew that Donna was due, and, and they said, you better get to town because there's really a bad storm coming. So we packed up and went to town, and uh, a big storm did hit that night and the next day, and... Uh, we were, back then the roads were very poor and the equipment wasn't as good as we have now. And this one morning, uh, we, Donna, my wife, said, I think, I think this is gonna be the day. <laughs> so um, we had heard that the snowplow had gone up on Highway 17 and that part of the road was open and that's going to Detroit Lakes. So we uh, went into the, got in the car, and we did get up to the Becker County line, and that another mile had we had to travel to get onto Highway 59 to go into Detroit Lakes. Well, someone else had gone through on the Becker County Road, but the snowplow hadn't been there yet, but uh, some other people had gone through. So we got through, and we went to Detroit Lakes, and then we went down to Frazee, and then we ended up in Perm where the <laughs> hospital is. So we got down to check into the hospital. I think it was around 12.30 or 1 o'clock. And that's when uh, the Catholic nuns were running the hospital. And anyway, they said that they felt that Don was coming due to have her baby, the first one. And so I stayed there and stayed. And uh, But anyway, I stayed all night, and then the next day, and I've forgotten what time, but anyway, the next day, our, we got our first baby boy. And uh, they kept her there for five days, and when we started back for home, don't you know then the sun was shining and there was, the <laughs> snow was melting and everything. But, so we, we made it and this and that. But I want to tell you about uh, some friends of ours. Their name was Rodney and Marion Flatto. And this happened, I, I didn't hear about it until later, but they were lived out in the uh, country too, uh, halfway between us and Perm. And they lived um, with all township roads around it. And they were completely, completely, they could not get out. And her due date was coming up and uh, so Rodney's uh, parents, or his dad, had a team of horses and a bobsled. And they, he lived uh, well, probably a couple of miles from where Rodney and Marion lived. 
And anyway, he came to the rescue with his horses, and they bundled Marion up and Rodney, and they headed for the Perm to the hospital, and they were there in plenty of time. And then she gave birth to a little baby girl a couple of days before uh, us. So, but anyway, it was a very miserable, miserable march. Uh, I, I think because of of uh, having a baby and being frightened to think that what are we going to be at home when the baby comes, I, that was enough to terrify you. But anyway, that's my story for today. So I thank you for listening to me. Well, Mon, I think, you know, when you think about it, as far as now, if, um, you know, you have to get in your car and it might be cold to go to the hospital, but I can't even imagine if you're pregnant and you're going to be having a child, uh, <laughs> having a horse show up and bundle you up and put you in that. And so think about that if you're, if you're cold when you're going to the hospital. But, well, um, we did have a pretty good car, but... Uh, yeah, our, our driveway getting out of our house was miserable, and so it all worked out real good for us. The other thing I'm a little worried about is we're filming this in February, and, and you're talking about March weather? March. <laughs> okay. March. David was born <laughs> on March 22nd. So, okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, Ray. And Rodney, why don't you tell us a little bit about, um, we're going to be having a couple shows on this, and so please um, continue to stay tuned. But Rodney, I want, I know that you have some stories to tell about, like the mail cars, and when you were, I'll hold it for you if you'd like. Okay. Um, the first thing I, I'm thinking about, we all feel that the winters way back in our youth were really a lot tougher than now. But if you look at statistics, that's not true. I think part of the problem was that we didn't have the equipment back then that they have now. And especially true in cars, you know. Cars, you didn't have a head bolt heater. You didn't have a automatic start. You didn't have, one of the things we had to do was buy windshields frost shields you put on the window and they, you'd glue them on so you'd have a double glass and some people improvise and they had a little fan uh, the mount on the dashboard would keep the window clear and then a, the, a little a little fan like that 12 volt fan <laughs> okay. and uh ch chains were a, a must too you had to have a chain to get out of your yard and out of your home and one thing that amuses me is when some guy would be coming to town and a cross link had broke. So that cross link was slapping against the uh, fender all the time. <laughs> and the dogs were following him and it was click, 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 all the way into town. And, and uh, uh, George Edwards was the mail carrier and he, uh, he rigged up a car that could go sort of over the snow. He had one that had tracks and go in the snow, but he had one with big balloon tires. There's a picture here on it. I'll have to show you after a bit. And uh, so they found ways to get around in spite of that. And then um, there wasn't, is this before snow builds I'm thinking about, but the cars uh, were used quite a bit for winter sports. I know we'd go down the highway with a car and a long rope and go along the road ditches. And we got pretty skilled at tossing the rope over the mailboxes as you come like that. And then, uh, Rodney, I'm going I'm to just stop you right there because we're going to hear more about this um, next week. Um, I want to hear a little bit how, well, I'm, I'm, number one, I'm glad that you survived all that. But, <laughs> but um, I want you to stay tuned. We're going to be having more on our bad winter and how these guys survived winter is much worse than what we've seen. So thank you. You have a good day in Vergas.